start off the year with a video to show you everything I made in 2023. So in 2023 I had 15 finished objects but I'm also going to show you the first one of 2024 and that's because it's a gift knit and tomorrow I'm giving it away to its recipient so this is my chance to show you all about that project. As I was reflecting on what I made this last year it was interesting to compare to the year before. So in 2022 I was all about socks, I was totally sock crazy but in 2023 I didn't make any socks <laughs> and that's actually kind of surprising to me but I think it was because I got holes in a bunch of them and then I was just like eh, not worth it I need some space <laughs> kind of a thing though I do have some sock yarn that I am excited to use this year but we'll see um so yeah 2023 was all about exploring garments and sweaters and all sorts of things and it was so much fun. I learned a lot because I never made, I made my first tea in the summer of 2022 and later that November, December, I made my first sweater and that was a huge boost. It was so encouraging and so exciting and fun. And so 2023 has been all about garments and learning constructions and different kinds of techniques and just exploring so many things. So let's dive right in with the first one. My first finished object of the year is the Office Sweater by Knit Flitter. And it is a more basic sweater. So it's simple and straightforward. I'll show you more in a second, but it has this really lovely compound raglan that fits great. It's really nice construction. I love the neckline. It's not too wide, it's not too tight. It just, it's nice and airy and breathable with, and it doesn't choke, but it's also not gapy. One thing I loved about the short rows was the way the pattern was written for them. So the designer explains the short rows in two ways. I think one is like line by line written out, um, but that just kind of like made my eyes glaze over a little bit and was like, oh, that seems hard. Um, but then the other way to do it, she had this table in the back where it's like, okay, there's a, it's like a, like a table, I suppose, with a bunch of squares in it. And in the bottom right, there's this one that says start here. And then there's arrows pointing which box to go to next. And you just kind of like work your way across and up and you just do what's ever in the next box. And so it's like, okay, start here, do this thing that's in this box and move to the next one do whatever's in this box. Next one here. And then on you go. And it's just really fun and easy to follow. And it's like playing a board game. <laughs> so that I thought that was really clever. It was a nice way to write short row instructions. And here's what it looks like. So the yarn I used was Wool Pop in the color Sage, and it's a wool blend. You can kind of see the heathering there. I forget exactly what the blend is, but down in the description box, I'll have a link to my Ravelry project pages. And if you click on that and look at the project, you'll find everything like the type of yarn, any notes I wanted to make, size, etc. And the size I made, this one was a size B, so the second size, and it was recommended for my bus circumference, which is about 33 inches, and I'm also 5'7", so if that gives you any idea for, like, how to judge positive ease on my sweaters and stuff, there you go. Um, let's see. And I think... Part of the idea for this sweater is to go over like a collared shirt, 
but since I don't work in an office anymore, like I don't typically do that. I'm not that much of a collared shirt person. Um, so I think if I were to make it again, which I would love to, great pattern, very fun. And I love how wearable and basic it is. Um, I would definitely make this again. Next time I would make the first size because I think this is a little bit, a little more oversized than what I'm looking for, though it is really comfortable. But the uh, sleeves are also really long. Um, they were okay before I blocked them. And then once I blocked the sweater, it grew. So yeah, story of every knitter, right? <laughs> but yeah, I have not depilled the sweater since I made it. So this is about one year of worth, or one, one year's worth of pilling. Though I haven't worn it all year because it gets too hot, but that's what that looks like. So I don't think it's too bad. Um, though I will say the annoying thing about this yarn is that it is commercially dyed. So you would expect it to be really even and not to pool, but there was pooling in one of the skeins, which you can see in the middle here. So it's unfortunate, it's not perfect, but it doesn't keep me from wearing it. And I'm just like, eh, oh well, it's a handmade sweater. It's fine. <laughs> so I still enjoy it, especially for around the house. And this is this DK weight, which is just the perfect weight for my climate. Like it's not too warm, it's not too cold. It's great for like every season but summer. <laughs> so I really like that about it. My second finished object for 2023 is the Chunky Dahlia Sweater by Lene Holm Samso. So this is the Chunky Dahlia and I started it in January and finished it in February. And the yarn I made this with is Drops Wish in the color Bordeaux. I think that's color number 10. Um, I used exactly 11 balls and let's see, it's a blown yarn that comes in 50 gram balls. I believe it's 50 grams. <laughs> Otherwise that would be a really heavy sweater. Um, but it's um, a relatively tight gauge for that yarn. You don't have to use, I forget what needle I used for this, but you could definitely use bigger needles than I used for this one, but to get gauge for the pattern. Anyway, um, so it's a fairly dense fabric, but it is really lovely and I would definitely duplicate this as I have, you know, dream knitting to do. Um, yes, so let's talk about the pattern. So I made it kind of like a full length because it easily covers, it's like a normal length sweater, not cropped or anything. Um, it has balloon sleeves and I really like it. It's the first time I've made balloon sleeves like that. Um, it does have pilling, but like I said, I haven't, I haven't depilled any of these since I made them. However, I did pick up this brush, this kind of bristle, bristle brush from Coco Knits. And the idea is that if you have like a fuzzy sweater, like this one, like this is an alpaca blend, you can just brush whatever it is like if it's mohair or something it'll get the pills out and kind of make it fluffy again so i plan on doing that soon um because this has gotten to this state where it's like oh i really want to wear that but not like that I need to fix it first so i plan on doing that and like for the office sweater that i just showed you i also picked up a gleaner and similar idea but for like smooth yarns you just kind of brush the sweater with this thing and it's kind of like it reminds it's like a, a semi-rough stone but it's even <laughs> i don't know they have it comes with three different levels so like a version for like really fine knits normal knits and then chunkier knits and then that also has this like lint brush thing i'm sure you all know what gleaners are i'm pretty late to the party on this but yeah so after a year of making sweaters it's finally time to do some maintenance as far as modifications to the pattern 
The original has a folded over collar, but for my version, I wanted kind of like a smooth profile here. I didn't want it to like puff up or anything. I thought it would look a bit cleaner. Um, so I just cast on, I think I did tubular cast on because I knew I'd do one by one rib. And then I did a twisted rib, which I don't think was in the pattern. I don't remember. Um, but I also added short rows because it does not have short rows in the pattern. And I just put them in the collar. And if you're curious how I did that, I wrote exactly what I did on my project page. Um, and so it was, it was pretty easy. And I also had fun playing around with the lace. So because I did a twisted rib here, I kept the tw twisted knit stitches like going down the center rib of the leaf or petal. I thought that looked cleaner and it kept it from kind of spreading out. And I also experimented with ways to keep the eyelet holes even on this on each side. So in some of the projects, you, you'll notice on Ravelry, like one side will be smaller holes and one side has bigger holes. And even like the original sample does that. And if you follow the instructions, like as they are, that's what's going to happen. Um, just because of the nature of the knit stitches you're doing. So I was just really curious if I could experiment with different ways to see if I could mitigate that and make them more symmetrical. And I think I found an improvement. I'm not sure if it was vastly helpful, but I'm happy with the result. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's too bad. Um, so yeah, I also have instructions for that on my Ravelry page. So if you're curious, <laughs> I just had a lot of fun, like, what happens if I twist this or yarn over the opposite way <laughs> or like these kinds of things. And so I did end up finding a rhythm to the lace that helped it work better. And it wasn't too complicated. So that was fun. Um, I love the feminine detail of how the petals are placed where you have this kind of like M thing going on. It, it seems really flattering and feminine to me. And yeah, I just wear like a skin color bra underneath so that it's like not obvious you're wearing a bra, but I also don't think it's totally necessary to have to wear a cami underneath because, I mean, the holes aren't everywhere and they're not that big. So it's like, well, it's fine. <laughs> and yeah, I will also say I love the fit. Really well done. I made the size extra small, which was the smallest size. And I think it's like a 40 inch bust, something like that. Um, the fit's fantastic. I really like the fit of circular yokes. They're so comfortable and interesting. Um, I think they're great for oversized and fitted styles for me. I know like different body types tend to gravitate towards different, like drop shoulder or raglan or all these different constructions, but I'm really liking circular yoke. So yeah. This one was wonderful. I would love to make one exactly like this in like a lighter medium gray. Um, same yarn, same modifications, same everything. <laughs> Just a different color. I am really, really happy with it. This sweater is so comfortable. Like, I've even like taken naps in it. <laughs> it's just so soft and warm and cozy. But it's something I also wear for like date night and to feel fancy and festive and all these things. And since I finished it in February, like just before Valentine's Day, I wore it for <laughs> Valentine's um, date, which was a lot of fun. Um, and that's definitely got me thinking like, I think from now on, I really want to make something like pinkish red in February. Like I'm not that Valentine's Eve of a person, but it's like, I like those colors anyway, and it's like an extra special time to use those colors. So I might be doing that. All right, and my third project of the year is a ranunculus by Midori Hirose. So this is the ranunculus that I started and finished in February. It did not take very long, even though I like redid parts of it and it felt like it took forever. It really didn't. Um, Anyway, I'll get to that. <laughs> um, so I made the size one, I believe, and I held two different yarns together. 
The first one was Fibre Nature Cobblestone in the, couple, in the color Meadow. It's a big cake that comes in like a 200 gram big cake. It looks like a beehive kind of thing. Um, and it has, this one has like greens and blues color changing throughout and the color shifts are like really short and they repeat. And it's kind of barber poly. If you look for like the blue and green yarns, you can kind of see it in here. I used every bit of it in the sweater. I had one cake of it. And then the pink yarn in there is some hand dyed that I made. And so it has this like muted mauve like beigey pink in the background and then flashes of hot pink as well as like blue and green throughout. So like, it blends pretty well, I think. Um, but one of the traits of the cobblestone yarn is that it pools and it pools heavily. So if you were to look on Ravelry at that yarn page and see the projects of stuff made with it, you would see lots and lots of pooling because that's just what it does. But I was curious if I could mitigate that a little bit and you can. And so the biggest things are adjusting your stitch count or gauge because that affects where the colors line up. And also pairing it with this totally different kind of yarn helped a lot. So I was really careful when dyeing the pink one to make sure it wouldn't pool. Um, there are tricks you can do to avoid that. And so I think it worked out. Um, I'm not noticing any pooling from the pink and you can kind of see pooling where like there's a bunch of blue together or a light area or something but because the color shifts are so short and they happen all over the place it gives kind of like an overall even texture of micro pooling i guess but i'm fine with that like that it's because it's even it works for me and so this is more of a cropped length these are high-waisted pants my belly button's right here um yeah so this is about as cropped as I want to go. I just wanted to eke out as much as I could out of that 200 gram ball. And I used like maybe a skein and a half of fingering weight hand dyed yarn. This is a bit more color crazy than I usually do. I feel like I'm a bit more muted in my color choices like don't get me wrong i still love color and you'll see a whole variety of colors here today but like this feels kind of loud but i still love wearing it i've been surprised how much i really do want to wear it and i'll wear it like everywhere it's not like i don't feel conspicuous so that's been a lot of fun and since i finished it in time for spring uh it's been like a I'm ready for flowers and all the blooming things and it just felt so springy to me and like the violet motifs here like little flowers and it was nice ah modifications to the pattern so like i said i did the size one i think i did a normal tubular cast on not the way she describes it um she uses like a crochet version which i find fiddly i did twisted rib here and for the sleeves, I mean, I did the long sleeve option and I ended up tapering them. One, to get more length out of it. And also the first time I did the sleeves, they were straight and it was more like that. And it was up here and it like was like in the most awkward spot of my elbow and it was really uncomfortable. And because it was looser, it felt really untailored. And it's like, oh, this, these sleeves are just so uncomfortable. And whenever I would try it on, I did not want to wear it. I just wanted to take it off. It was very uncomfortable. And so the sweater just sat for a while, just not being worn. And then I'm like, there's no point in making a sweater and not wearing it. And so I picked it back up. I ripped the sleeves back and then I did decreases all along and now like it's not perfect it still is a little bit weird ideally it would be like this i think but it's good enough like i feel like it went from being Ooh, too much no to eh, 
okay, that's fine. <laughs> and so uh, it's a success. <laughs> um, I also did try to do decreases in the body because it's like, I don't need it to be oversized. I could have it be a bit more fitted, but it was really weird. Even when I did decreases like only on the sides, it ended up it ended up like fitting me like this like it was really tight in the front and looser in the back and it was just the weirdest fit i couldn't get it so and that also did some funky stuff with pooling with the blue green yarn and so i was like okay forget it i know the stitch count for color management is fine like when, when you split for sleeves like i know that works so i'm just gonna knit straight down and it was fine so yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's been a really fun knit. I've worn it a lot. And surprisingly, it doesn't really need pilling, like pill removal. So, like maybe a little bit, but it's really not bad. All right, so after knitting a lot of stockinette, like, yes, there was some lace with the dahlia, and there's a little bit of lace here. Um, but interestingly, that's a circular loop. That's a circular yoke. This is a circular yoke with a little bit of raglan and then the next one is also a circular yoke um but after knitting lots of stockinette i was ready for something more interesting so bring on the phosphane sweater this one's by inga semmingson so this is the phosphane sweater so and as i looked in my notes i realized there's two more projects that i did in between the ranunculus and this one but i don't have them because they were gift knits so real quick i have pictures <laughs> I made the Silta Shawl by Tiff Nealon, and it's from Linus' 52 Weeks of Scarves book, and isn't it beautiful? Like, it's a DK weight shawl, and it uses two colors. I used Drops Lima, and I used three balls of each color. The first one was... The darker color I used was purple, color number 4434, and the lighter color was orchid, color number 4088. And um, this was a gift for my husband's grandmother. I just wanted to show her some love because I don't have grandparents anymore, and so, like, his family's my family too. So I, I made this for her, and it was pretty fun because at the time it totally matched her hair. <laughs> and so it was, it was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, so I sent this off to her. It was a really fun pattern to make. It flew and it ended up getting pretty big. It was 73 inches by 28 and a half inches. I'm not a big shawl knitter, but it was really fun and I totally see why people make shawls. It was great. <laughs> and the color was fun. Um, the stitch pattern and the texture is changing all the time. And so you always have something interesting to do. You don't get bored. And yeah, it was a really nice pattern. And I started that one in February and finished it in March. And the next project I made that was also a gift knit was from this book, Knit Like a Latvian. And it was the Morning Star Mittens. And these were a gift for my mother-in-law. Last year I had made my two sisters-in-law mittens from this book. And so I wanted to continue it with her and she picked out the colors she chose jameson and smith um she for the main color it was white it was jameson and smith shetland supreme jumper weight and the color 2001 i used one 50 gram ball of that contrast color i used jameson and smith two ply jumper weight and a dark green color 82 mix and i used two 25 gram balls and at this point, I always get two balls of whatever the contrast color is because it's it's pretty close sometimes for yarn chicken. Even though the directions only say you need one more often than not, I need two. So I just go ahead and do that to be safe. And I'm okay with scraps because if I have a bunch of colors of the same kind of yarn, I can use them in something later. And they're perfect for color work, which I really enjoy. Um, as you can see, <laughs> those mittens are fun, and I like how they have a little flower detail on the thumbs. I thought that was cool. And those I also started and finished in March. And now for the phosphane sweater. Like I said, this one's by Inka Semmingsen, 
and it's a really fun sweater that has color work and cables and yeah so let's take a look so it has it all over and then there's this long red at the bottom um i ended up making that longer than the pattern said so one to use up the yarn and also to make it long enough <laughs> um otherwise i think it would have been a little too cropped but this way i can wear it out like that or sometimes i tuck it in and then you don't even notice that the ribbing is too long um yeah so i think that looks good too um, yeah and and for this one i use some pretty special yarn so a while back i've gone to the trailing of the sheep festival up in idaho and while I was there, I picked up yarn that I intended to be a shawl, but then I ended up turning into this. So this is some like local Utah Coriadale yarn. It's a three ply sport weight from Nottlewonk Springs. And this brown is, I think it's also a three ply, but DK weight and it's CVM yarn. Love it. I love CVM yarn. I have a thing for that. Um, yeah, I totally fell in love and I really like that brown yarn a lot and so I had three skeins of the white and one of the brown and the pink kind of color colorful yarn is Noro Salt Garden Sock Solo and the color like T82 they also have like city names and stuff but I forget what the actual name of that yarn is that color but I really like it also and I look forward to using that again um it's just such a pretty yarn I like Nara's stuff um especially for color work because it's really cool contrasted against something else um yeah so there's like it's basically all over color work or cables except for most of the sleeve which is stockinette but then uh, it has a little bit of texture and then some more color work on the sleeves which is nice. And one thing I like is that the ribbing is really interesting because it's not all the same. Um, I think that's two by two. That looks two by two. But I think down here it's like, hmm, no, wait a minute. There's a two by one somewhere. Yeah, I think that's two by one. The hem is two by one yeah and the sleeves are two by two which is really interesting that they she made it different and I actually really like it it totally works I made the size one because one that's all I had yarn for but the fit is really nice so I'm really happy with this more fitted style I think this is actually one of my most worn sweaters I've worn this a ton. I feel really good in it because it's like, it feels fancy with the color work, but it's also like, I don't feel like it's too over the top. Um, it fits really well. Yeah, I've become a big fan of circular yoke sweaters. Ooh, and an interesting thing about the construction of this is that there are short rows in the sweater, but they're after the color work. So, up to this point, the only kind of short rows I'd done were like right here, but the short rows in this pattern are right here. And that's a pretty common thing for color work yoke sweaters, so I've heard. I just hadn't done it before. Um, and if you look at the pattern photos and projects and stuff, you'll see the short rows are pretty obvious because it's like a stockinette wedge underneath the, the color work. And then the texture of the body starts underneath that. So normally there would be like a wedge of stockinette and then the texture, but I didn't like that very much. It looked like it interrupted the look of the sweater too much. So I was trying to think, how do I get around that? How do we jump straight into the cables and textures and things? So I thought there would be two ways to do it, either do all of the like brain stuff trying to figure out when you're supposed to do what kind of stitch when you do a cable and it's like 
it gets really complicated. <laughs> or you do the labor intensive, tedious way of doing everything and fixing it later. And I went for the tedious way. <laughs> and so it's like, you know what? I'll just have a different kind of knitting time. I'll put on a movie or a podcast and I'll just, I won't technically be knitting, I'll be fixing or whatever, but it was totally worth it. Um, so I spent about three days doing this part. But uh, So basically what I did was I followed the pattern exactly for the short rows. And then I think I did maybe like one row of the instructions to establish the pattern. Like that way it would tell me where all the purl stitches should be, the knit stitches, where the cable should be. And so like, okay, it tells me where it wants to be. And then, whoa. So it told me where each kind of stitch or where the pattern would be. And then I just laddered down. So it's like, this is knitted top down. So imagine this is upside down. Um, so like, my needle is here, and say all this was stockinette. I laddered down and like either made things a knit or a purl stitch based on what it should be going forward. And I even learned how to ladder down and add cables. So that was really cool. I learned how to do that. Um, it's really not hard. It's just like, oh, cool. I never thought about that. Um, so that was a lot of fun and that was pretty rewarding to do and I really like the result. And now I have the extra fabric from the short rows that I need to make it fit well. And it also looks good in the pattern. So I was like, so that was a nice accomplishment for the sweater. But yeah, um, really happy with this one. I was really interested in doing a sweater that had both color work and cables. And there really aren't that many patterns for the like that out there like there's some but there's not near as many to choose from as there are like just color work or just cables so anyway if you're a designer go for it <laughs> i'd be interested in making more like this and i started knitting the phosphane sweater in march and i finished in april and my next finished object introduces my summer knit era <laughs> so as you'll see there's several to come and we're starting with the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. So this is the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. Um, I intended to make the size extra small. That would have been recommended for my size, but um, my gauge was very drastically off. <laughs> and um, so I ended up following the numbers for the size medium. And it's still not quite right, but it fits kind of. <laughs> um, so the yarn I used for this was Sandoz Garn Tinned Lena in the color 6531. It's a really nice light blue. Um, Nathan, my husband, got me this for Christmas and it's just really pretty and I love that he picked up the color. Um, I mentioned, like I like on a wish list or whatever, I said, I'm interested in trying this yarn and I would need about this many balls to make something. Kind of a thing and then he picked the color and stuff so it was, it was really nice um so i love it and i'm really glad he got me five balls because turns out i need the extra one um i think technically i should have only needed four for this but definitely using the fifth one because of gauge issues um but yeah so it's really lovely i used the recommended needle size which was three millimeters but I just must have knit tighter or was not used to this yarn or something. So I was several stitches off of what I should have been for gauge. So it's it's pretty small. When I first split for sleeves, when I was following the numbers for the extra small, um, I, I could barely get it on. It was so weird. And um, so then I started doing the numbers for medium and this is how it is. Um, I still think the arm separation is too high. It's, you're not supposed to get creases like that. That's not good. So I have plans to fix it, but yeah. So as far as like eye cord edging, you're supposed to do some decreases in there and maybe even change needle size. I can't quite remember, but I just used the same needle size, three, mil three millimeter throughout. 
I didn't do any decreases in the I chords, and I think that worked out just fine. Um, I really like sleeve length. The fabric is really nice. Um, I love the color. It's pretty long. Um, so it's really easy to tuck in. It's nice and drapey. See all those folds. It's really comfortable. It's not super lightweight, but it feels, so it feels like a nice substantial thing, but it's still really flowy. Um, it is nice to wear in the summer. I do enjoy it. Um, I think I would like it more if it fit better at the underarms. But, um, so my plan for fixing this is to do some sweater surgery. So I'm like before the split here, um, I'm going to thread a needle or some like embroidery floss or something like through one row all the way around and then jump up two more rows and do the same thing. And then I'll cut in between where I've threaded through and then I'll just kind of separate the body from the yoke. And then I plan on using my extra yarn that I have to just kind of increase the yoke maybe like um, one and a half to two inches um just to make it really like flowy and airy if you look in the sample photos that petite knit has there's like lots of room in there and i think that's more what i'm looking for so hopefully after i do that i'll be able to do like a pretty even kitchener stitch to kind of seam them back together the top and bottom and then, fingers crossed, it'll work. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my idea for this one. I have yarn to make a second um, cumulus tee, but I don't think I'll really want to make it until I fix this one, because <laughs> I'm not very excited to make it yet. So we'll see where that goes. But I think if I can get this one to fit really nicely and I enjoy wearing it, then I'll be excited to make another one. And I started this one in April and finished it in May. And I have actually worn it a few times, but it just has that like always in the back of my mind feeling of like, uh, I want to change. Like, I don't want to keep wearing this. <laughs> so that's a sign to me of like something needs to change. So, and then my next finished object, unfortunately I also don't have, but that's because it's a sample knit. It is the Snowy Forest Sweater by Midori Hirose. And it is such a beautiful pattern. And it's a different one because it has a really, really long yoke. Totally opposite to this one. <laughs> so the arms, the sleeve separation doesn't happen until like way down there. And it's just a really interesting construction. I made it for Yarn Nouveau, which is a local hand dyer here in Utah, and I love her yarn. Please check her out. She's amazing. Um, really great palette of colors, very like moody and earthy and just really good. <laughs> and her yarn is fantastic. It's so soft and she has a nice variety. And anyway, I'm really happy with her yarn. I love it. And anyway, at one point I saw her at a yarn festival and she mentioned like, oh yeah, I would, I need to get some more sample makers at some point. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> and so later on I emailed her and said, hey, if you want to, I'd be willing to do something. And so yeah, that's where it started. So she gave me the yarn and the pattern to make this for her. And then in exchange, she, she um, let me pick what yarn I wanted in return. And so that was very nice. I would really love to do that again sometime. So the yarn I used was Yarn Nouveau Merino Sport along with Surrey Alpaca Lace, both in the color Ironwood, which is this like cool, dark, moody brown. It's very nice. And the combination was incredibly soft and also very warm. It's a pretty big gauge, roughly 15 stitches per four inches, I think. But anyway, I ended up using like seven millimeter needles and it was a really airy, nice, drapey, flowy gauge. It made a great fabric, but I was really surprised how warm it was. And so it was like, hmm, interesting to know. Um, yeah, very, very soft. 
I didn't notice any pooling with her yarn. Um, I did alternate skeins just to be like extra safe, but I mean, I didn't notice any and no color shifts. It was just like the beautiful tonal hand-dyed look, very even. I made the size M2 and I have detailed like how much yarn I ended up using on my Ravelry page if you need to know. And an interesting note about the design, so it has these really beautiful cables all along the yoke and there's like big ones and little ones and all sorts of stuff going on. Um, but the original design is like, it's not symmetrical. So if you like chop it down the middle, like it's not exactly the same on either side. It's like offset a little bit. And the designer did that on purpose to give it a more dynamic look. And I really like that. So I just, she gives you the option to make it symmetrical if you want to, but I really like the original kind of asymmetrical thing. So it, it was pretty cool. I liked that. So I started working on that on June 10th and I finished June 29th. So it really didn't take long at all at that kind of gauge. The sweater flies. It was really nice to make that kind of construction with the really deep yoke as a sample knit that I don't have to wear or feel obligated to wear because it lets me try out something new and kind of see what I think of it. And it would be difficult to wear a sweater like that under a coat because it would just like the coat would make it pull up and it wouldn't fit very well. However, for just being cozy around the house or if you're like going out in like spring or fall, it would actually be super nice and cozy. So it's actually kind of on my list to try because it'd be a really, really good just around the house cozy sweater, which I would take advantage of a lot because I'm home a lot. And the next finished object I have for 2023 is the Soho Top by Kadri. So this is the Soho Top by Kadri, and I started this one June 29th and finished July 15th. Um, this was such a good knit for me. Like, I love this pattern. <laughs> it's such a good pattern. The yarn I used was also a gift from my husband, and it is San Garnina in the color... 8561 and I used five balls of it. So this is just like the yarn I used for the Cumulus Tea except the thicker version. Same kind of blend. And yeah, let's take a look. It is exactly the same, the front and back. Um, you start up here and then you work down, connect them around, and then work down. And so I'm pretty sure I have a pretty long torso, so I generally have to make everything longer than whatever the pattern says. So, oh well, I'm glad I have, I'm glad I had the extra yarn to do that. It has this really nice kind of faux seam at the side. Um, and because it is all garter stitch, once you connect in the round, you'll, you're doing like a row of knits and then a row of purls. Um, but I'm, I don't mind purling, especially if it's for a result like this. And I'm really happy with the fit as far as like armhole depth and everything. Uh, she has really good instructions for the eye cords and how to do that. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. I do wear a strapless bra with it, but the top of my bra band is like right there. So there's still like plenty of coverage without it being too tight or anything. So it's just really well thought through. I found it very easy to wear, extremely comfortable. It's not a super light tee because you're using like dense, thick fiber. That's like plant fiber yarns are heavier than wool ones and it's a thicker yarn, but but I think because it's not resting on your shoulders, you don't feel the weight. It's just way up here on these little bits. And it's like, oh, I hardly feel like I'm wearing much, but it's it's really comfortable. It feels nice and squishy and soft. And it's, yeah, I really like this. And I plan to make another one this year um, and some other yarn that I have, but I would absolutely make one out of Santa Scar and Lena again. I'm always really tempted to like pick up another quantity. It's like, oh, I could do that. 
and it would be so nice and I would wear it so much. <laughs> so maybe I'll just pick up some more sometime, but definitely a win. I made the size three. I used five balls of yarn. For the body length, I knit it 13 inches from here till the bind off. So yeah, highly recommended. My next finished object for the summer is the Vilia Tea by Rania Hakaleto. So this is the Vilia Tea, and it's actually my first test knit that I've ever done. And I was so excited to try test knits. Um, I had applied to several before this one, but I think because I've never done it before, I didn't really have much to show on my Ravelry page that I wasn't getting accepted. So I was like, oh, bummer, like I want to start somehow but how do you get into it um and then this designer had a call come out and it was a really quick turnaround and it's like two or three weeks or something <laughs> and so I was like well probably not many people are gonna go for that and it's a cute pattern so let's see if we can do it sounds like a fun challenge let's go and maybe I can get in that way and it worked so I made the size small and I started this August 7th and finished August 18th. <laughs> so it's like 12 days or something. <laughs> it was pretty fast. It does use DK weight yarn though, so that helped a lot. And the yarn I used was from Hobby Lobby and it's one I'd really recommend actually. Um, it's Yarn B Bamboodiful in the color white. This took three balls. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to make kind of except for the ending bit, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, so it has this folded over collar. It took me a couple tries to make sure it wasn't like twisting because I didn't line, line it up properly, um, but it's okay, it works now. And you'll notice there's this little gap here from the increases, I guess, but that's, this is easily fixed by just sewing a little bit. On the underside so not worried about that it's not perfect though and then it has this little cuff sleeve detail that's kind of like tacked down really softly and let's see my favorite thing about this pattern is the shoulder construction it's tapered or it's sloped here and then this is like a set in sleeve deal where it goes out like that it's really cool it's really nicely thought through. And then yeah. here's how it looks. Ends. <laughs> I haven't actually worn this yet, as you can probably see from like the ends still hanging out. Um, I'm not a huge fan of how these just like pooch out like crazy there. Um, and the cuff feels a little bulky, if I'm honest, but, um, it's really cute otherwise. So I think what I plan to do this year is I'll just revisit the sleeves. I would think I will either have enough yarn to either do like a cool, like longer baggy sleeve, or I might taper it a little bit, not too fitted. Cause I don't think that'll work with the oversized look but I think I'm going to do something different or I could just keep it short and kind of capped and do like a cute pico edge on the bottom but kind of fold it over and have the pico. I think that would be cute. I think I'll try that. And then I may or may not crop this a little bit because this it feels a little bit long. But honestly, the biggest deterrent and struggle I've had with this tee was when I was knitting this, I was almost to the ribbing and my one-year-old daughter was hanging out with me in my room while I was working on it. And I had a cup of coffee next to me and she came over and was like, accidentally like jarred my cup of coffee and a drop landed right on my knitting and I didn't realize it. And then later on, I saw that, that was there and I'm like, I'll walk out that'll wash out it'll be fine but it didn't really very well um I don't know if I can find it I guess maybe like somewhere in here maybe from rubbing or whatever 
I don't know. It, it was a bit discouraging. Because <laughs> this is white. <laughs> and so every little thing is going to show. So we'll see. I might. If it's not totally fixed. I mean. It looks pretty good now if I'm honest. I can't even see where it totally was. I just see where some of the yarn is kind of roughed up from me scrubbing. But I think it's pretty good. I think I just need to fix the sleeves and then it'll be fine. Then it'll be a nice thing to wear. Um, I used a different yarn fiber, different kind of fiber in my yarn than the designer used. And hers looks really cute and good. So maybe if you were to do the sleeves in her kind of yarn, it might not poof like that. And it might like sit a little better. I don't know, just a thought. But I do think the idea is really cute and I love the construction. And I do actually really love this yarn. It is so soft and drapey. It was really nice. So, yeah. So it was really fun to do a test knit. And I'm glad I finished on time. So that was nice. And my next finished object for the summer is the Margot Top by Gregoria Fibers. So this is the Margot top and it is one of my favorite finished objects from this year. Oh man, I really love this pattern. I think it is so nice. I just love the texture. I definitely have a thing for textured knits. Um, this one is similar to the Soho top in that it's the exact same front and back. Um, I don't believe there's any short rows. It's kind of like a boat net style, but it doesn't feel choky at all at least to me. Um, and this was the first time I used a modified three needle bind off to do that part. Oh, and so it's like, this is knit bottom up. And so then you bind off right there. I just think that is so pretty. I really like that look. So yeah, I'll show you. It's knit bottom up, so you cast on here, and this is where, this was the first time I heard about instructions to use a much smaller needle size for a tubular cast on, and then adjusting it to two by two rib, and it's pretty interesting. I didn't do the instructions. <laughs> Because I started this on a trip and I didn't have all my needles with me. And so I was just like, eh, I'm just going to go for it. And so you do get the weird kind of wonky leading stitch there. However, I do, I'm very curious to try her method of casting on for that. Because I think it'll go better. I think from what I've heard, I think that method is the best to turn the tubular cast on into two by two rib. Curious to try it, but um, yes. So for me, in order to get stitch gauge, I couldn't get row gauge. So I think it actually kind of worked out in my favor because it ended up to be less knitting because my rows were taller than hers. Um, but yeah, and I was able to put more length here in the body where I usually need it. I do think I made this, I either made it longer by one repeat or I didn't change it because my row gauge was already compensating, something like that. But then for this part here, I actually left out a repeat of the pattern. So a repeat would be like this eyelet section and a rib section. So I left out one of those because it was already deep enough. Um, so that was kind of nice. Um, and then you just go into this kind of twisted rib area. You bind off here, then you do these things. And then after that, you pick up around the armhole for the ribbing. And I think that's it. Um, loved the pattern. It was such a joy and pleasure to knit. Um, the yarn I used was also Yarn B Bamboodiful in the color Cognac. And it's funny, I was thinking about this the other day. It's like, you know, I want to make that pattern again. 
I want to use that yarn again. I want to use that same color again. Oh wait, that makes no sense. <laughs> it was just so nice. Like, I love the color in the yarn. It feels so soft and nice. If you're worried about a cotton yarn not feeling soft, try this one. It's not straight cotton. It has like bamboo in it or viscose from bamboo or something, but it's a really nice blend. It has really excellent stitch definition to show off the texture. And yeah, so I have three balls of this yarn in a pink color. I'm very tempted to use it to make another one of these. Um, because there are a whole lot of eyelets, I do wear a cami underneath, but it doesn't make it that much hotter. And depending on your gauge and how big your eyelets are, you may not even need to do that. I don't know if I really need to do that, but it makes me feel a little more comfortable. So I do. Um, yeah. So highly recommend the pattern. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I love it. It's just, I feel so fancy in it, even though it's just a tank, but it's nice. And I couldn't have enough of the tanks this last summer, so my next finished object is a mini mock neck tank by Jessie Maid. And I made the size small, though I think I also may have had a little bigger gauge than recommended, because I, I think I used a pretty thick fingering weight. Anyway, um, I started this August 25th and finished September 4th. And it, it's really fun and cute. Like I got this yarn as a present for like my birthday or something perhaps, but I had one skein of this hand dyed yarn and it is by Blue Savannah. I think it's her like Targi base and it is the Bluebird base. I, I, can't, I couldn't find a whole lot of information on it. I'd have to go to her website or something. Um, and the colorway is Purple Rider. Um, I like pinks and purples are my favorite colors, but I don't typically go for like royal purple. So this was like, ooh, that's a bit bright. What am, what am I gonna use that for? But um, when I came across this pattern, I was just like, you know, I really wanna make that. And it looks good in really bright colors. It's really fun. And so it's like, a really good canvas for crazy colors I think and so I you know it's like that's actually a really good pairing I could see this working so um yeah I'm really pleased with the combination of pattern and yarn it feels really nice I like the targi and like I believe it's either 100% wool or maybe it has a little bit of nylon in it I'm not sure but anyway it's like not a summer fiber but so I don't, I wouldn't wear this like out and about like for that reason in summer because it would be too hot, but for like as an underlayer or just chilling in an air conditioned house, like it's nice. <laughs> um, and I also wouldn't wear it out by itself normally because it is very cropped. I had um, one skein, like I said, but it was like a 120 gram skein. So thankfully it was longer and I had about 450 yards, which was great. And with it being thicker, like it, the rows went farther. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, it was a really fun pattern to make. You start up at the top and you work down, which is great if you're not quite sure how long it's gonna be. And the, you don't have to pick up anything for the sleeves. This is all done as you go. And it's really simple, it's just ribbing. But it stays nice and flat and it doesn't curl. And then you do pick up for the neckline later and you can make it like a crew or you can make it a mock neck tank. That's what I went for because I really like that look. Um, yeah, because I think my row gauge was longer than the gauge for the pattern my armhole was, did go down like to here um so what i did at the end was i just used the same yarn and i did like a crochet reinforcement along the inside i'm not sure if you can see but there is like yeah you can see that 
there's this crochet line going down through here and I just tightened it up and so that this crochet line is what controls how stretchy or not the armhole is and so that was a really easy quick fix for a tank that had too deep of armholes so I would definitely recommend that as a trick to try if you have something you need to alter um it worked out really well yeah I'll show you how cropped it is um yeah not something I would typically go for but it's really great for like as an underlayer just hanging out at the house it just meets these high-waisted jeans but I would be too self-conscious to be out and about like that but I know it's definitely a style at least among like younger women so it's like okay I, so like it looks great like other people can rock it that's great um I would just feel too much like I'm pretending to be Gen Z <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like I'm not <laughs> but it's cute I love I love the profile here I love the mock neck it's it's really great I recommend the pattern I would definitely knit this again and went by really fast um wow yeah In like two weeks maybe I, I'm estimating that's pretty cool it's a quick knit all right so my next finished object is another gift knit that I don't have anymore <laughs> and it's another pair of mittens from this book and this time I made the crossroads mittens and pretty much these exact colors <laughs> So this is what they look like. Um, yeah. So I, the only alteration I made, like this doesn't have like a folded Pico edge and I did that version instead of this garter edge. Yeah. Um, so you know how I mentioned I made like those style of mittens for my sisters-in-law. So I guess Christmas 2022 I gave um, my sister-in-law Michelle a pair of mittens and I guess she had them like displayed or something in her decor throughout the winter and her mother-in-law came over to visit and every time she'd come over she'd be like ooing and aahing over these mints <laughs> and so eventually um they asked if I'd be willing to make her a pair so I said sure my brother-in-law it's his mom that these were for he picked out the pattern and the yarn and so we went with that and I think they turned out well. Um, however, I learned a lot about yarn choice this time. So usually, like I've always, I've only ever used Jameson and Smith yarn for these mittens because it's a really perfect pair. Like it, it goes great. Um, it's nice and wooly. It's two ply. It's the right kind of fingering. They have great colors. There's so many. It's just a great one-stop shop. And you can get like 25 gram balls so you don't need to buy a ton so it doesn't get too expensive um yeah so it's a good choice and so i've tried they have a shetland supreme jumper weight line then they have um a two ply jumper weight line that's the one with bazillions of colors and then they have this new line that's like shetland heritage yeah it's a Shetland Heritage line and they only have select colors but they look really cool and I was curious to try it and I noticed that there's weight changes among all of them so even though they're all two-ply fingering um I've noticed that the Shetland Supreme that's comes in 50 gram balls that's the thickest option in the middle is the two-ply jumper weight and those those two play pretty nicely together, especially if the Supreme is the background color. That works pretty well. Actually, that's kind of opposite to what I'm saying. Anyway, they, those, those work well interchangeably. Those are great. Um, but then this new Shetland Heritage line is thinner, even than the two ply jumper weight. And these two both come in 25 gram balls. Um, anyway, 
So I noticed that this time for the background color, like the blue and the red were the Shetland Heritage. And then the white I used was um, the Shetland Supreme. And like using the lightest and the thickest option, it was just like, ooh, I can see behind my stitches. And so like, that doesn't look the cleanest. It wasn't the cleanest pair of mittens I've ever made by any stretch. Um, but so I was feeling kind of self-conscious about it because I knew what it could be. And so I was showing it to Nathan as I was making I'm like, should I get different yarn and start over? <laughs> He's like, Carrie, no one is going to notice. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, for all the non-knitters out there, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, so that was encouraging. And then this was also like a funny thing that happened, but was also kind of nice to know, like, oh, I can fix this. Um, so what I tend to do, like, so when you're making the mittens, you get up to where the thumb hole is. It, the pattern tells you to like use waste yarn to place the thumb and then you kind of re-knit over that. And then that makes a nice hole there that you can easily pick up later and that sort of thing for, um, making the thumb when you're done with the mitten part. And, but I, it's really common for me to just forget to put the waist yarn in or to like move past it and not realize like, oh, I should have done that. So what I do is an afterthought mitten thumb, afterthought thumb. And so like, sometimes I'll just plan this beforehand and be like, I'm going to do this. I'm not even gonna think about waist yarn. But anyway, so I did that with this pair. So um, the first mitten, I put in like a thumb on this side and then the next mitten I did it exactly the same <laughs> and turns out it doesn't work so well to have two left mittens <laughs> so um I decided to like okay what can I do so I ripped the thumb out of the second one that I had started it's like okay what do I do okay Kitchener stitch and then duplicate stitch for wherever there's like weird funky color work going on and it worked if you weren't looking for it you wouldn't know it was there and then I just put the thumb on the other side of the mitten so then it's like it worked we had a mitten we had a pair a right and a left so it worked out in the end <laughs> but it's nice to know like that is fixable if you ever do it um yeah, just kitchener the hole and add some color work duplicate stitch as needed. <laughs> oh well, but I think she was really happy with them. Uh, she got it this last Christmas, so yeah. I started that September 1st and finished September 25th. I'm used to a pair of these mittens only taking me two weeks and this one took longer, um, partly because I was a little second guessing myself on the yarn and then only a little bit really for fixing it at the end but you know there were a, several or a few rows in the, this particular pattern that had three color color work on the same row and i hadn't done that before it is so slow and i really disliked it so now i know to avoid three color color work and or at least i know what to expect now whenever that's part of a pattern not a huge fan but now I know but clearly that didn't put me off color work because my next finished object for 2023 was the Anuka tank by Florence Sperling so this is the Anuka tank by Florence Sperling and this was my second ever test knit and yeah it was a lot of fun um I could not so summer was going and fall was coming on but I was not done with the tank tops. I wanted all the tank tops. That's all I wanted to make. And so it's like, ah, uh, fall is coming. I feel like I'm supposed to be doing fall things. What is the fall version of a tank top? The best. <laughs> so, um, however, I think this is somewhat at least intended to be a tank. Um, the designer used like a silk blend yarn um, from Mayak. So it may have been like a yak silk 
something blend. And so it could definitely have gone as a semi knit. Um, however, I had a lot of like two ply fingering wool color work yarn and stash. And so I was like, well, let's use some of that and I'll just make it like a fall vest kind of thing. So um, I applied and was really happy to be accepted. And so that was a really nice chance to do something like that. And yeah, the, so this was an interesting project for me because I was trying two new things, color work flat and intarsia. I've never done either of those. And so, yeah, so it turns out I really don't mind knitting color work flat. It was really fun and not near as hard as I thought it would be. And purling with color work is like not much different than actually purling. I knit continental normally. And so I don't know if that makes a difference, but it was just really nice. Um, here's how it looks. I have one thing with this pattern that I'm not super happy about, which is the length. So it's a lot more cropped than I thought it was going to be. Um, I knit the size two. Um, I started the September 29th and I finished October 30th. So it took about a month. Um, in the test call, she had one picture of it on a person and it was someone I think sitting like this where there was some folding here and it was like a cropped photo of like only this much so I could see like folds of fabric and it was really beautiful it was really nice and then there was a picture of it like hanging on a hanger just flat like that and between those two pictures you could not get a feel for how cropped it was and like there was none of a picture like of it like this on a person and so I really couldn't tell so but it's really on me though because I should have paid a lot more attention to the schematic and I should have like measured <laughs> so it's really on me but um to see like how how long I should make this part it's knit bottom up flat and so like by the time you seam it and you're up here, it's like, I'm not going to go back and fix it, but you might as well start over with different yarn and a new thing. It's not worth it. Um, oh, well, <laughs> um, ideally, like these are high-waisted jeans. And before I blocked it, it was above my belly bot button. So it was like, like my belly button's there. It was like here. <laughs> I'm like, that's ridiculous. That's not going to work. Um, oh well, I blocked it aggressively with pins and stuff on blocking mats, and um, it did help, but you know, it's not that much magic. <laughs> um, I think ideally I would have added, well, let's see, I would have wanted it to be that much longer maybe, so I think I would have done like one and a half to two repeats of this motif more, but oh well, it's okay. I really don't have that many or any cropped things in my wardrobe, so this is something new to try. Um, I do think it looks really good with skirts. Unfortunately, I don't really ever wear skirts. <laughs> it's like a rare thing for me, but maybe this will encourage me to do so. And it looks, I think it looks okay with the skirts that I have. Maybe I'll give that more of a go. Um, as far as styling this, it looks really cute with like a collared shirt. I have a white one. Um, kind of makes me look librarian-ish in like the sweater vest and like the collared button down. But um, it's still cute. And then I discovered like, hey, there's this like long sleeve light pink shirt that kind of coordinates with the pink in there. So that's good. Um, as far, I have very detailed yarn notes on my Ravelry page for that. So if you're curious um, for details, check that out. Um, I was very specific about exactly what yarn and how much I needed for it um, as part of the test knit. So, but as an overview, this is Cascade 220 fingering. It's a two ply non superwash. Really nice. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, this, my favorite one is this kind of it reads as blue. 
Let's see if you can see it. Sorry, we're in some artificial light now because the lights outside is going, but um, this blue that's also in here um, is Biche Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool in the color Candy. And it is so fun. It's such a fun color. It's like blue, pink, and yellow all mixed together. It, the overall reads as blue, I think. And then the yellow is also Biche Bouche in the color Yellow Mustard, I think. Um, and then these two are Jameson and Smith two-ply jumper weight, and I have their color info on the page. Yeah, so I'm really happy with the colors. It was really fun planning what they would be, and it's tricky to figure out because you're using the blue and brown together, use the blue and yellow together, use the pink and burgundy together, and then down here it gets all mixed up again. You've got the burgundy and brown, and then the pink and the yellow. And so it's like, it's hard to get the values right. I think having a really dark one is helpful. I think these could have been more contrasty. I like how that came out. But yeah, it's just interesting to kind of play around. Um, yeah, I enjoyed working on it. And the intarsia was really fun because it's like crazy yarn mess as you're working on it, but it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. It's just lots of yarn balls, like lots at once, but it's not actually hard. So that was really cool. Um, and that helped give me like a boost. It's like, oh, I feel like I have a new skill now. I can try new things. This is fun. I don't have to be intimidated. So that was a really great aha moment. Um, so yeah, so I had like, 10 different balls in front of me. So for like, so I started out the project going easy on myself. I did the back first because there's no intarsia. It's just doing color work flat. And then for the front, you do this panel, which has two colors, this panel, which has another two colors, this one that has another two colors, this one, even though it matches, you can't use the same yarn. So you have another two colors and likewise, another two colors. So 10 balls of yarn, all at once and um so i just i knit that part at a table with everything spread out and each pair of yarn was in like a little baggy <laughs> and that way it wouldn't get super tangled once i stuffed everything back into its project bag so it really wasn't that bad the front is slow just be prepared but um yeah i think it's really cute I think it would be very nice knit in summer yarn, like silk stuff, um, maybe knit longer and with like really fun, like boho colors and then just wear like a tank top. I think that would be cute. That's originally how it's designed. So it's, it's cute. Um, yeah, I would recommend it. And it was really nice to try these new skills. I liked it a lot. And my last finished object for 2023 is another gift knit, which I don't have, <laughs> but I'll show some pictures. It's the Cargill sweater by Rebecca Klo, and I started that September 26th, and I finished it November 26th. Um, I made the size 3, and I knit it for my niece, and thankfully, we're the same size. <laughs> so I could try it on and figure it out as I went, and fingers crossed, hopefully it would fit her too. Um, the yarn I used was Haiku Simplicity in the color Edgy Eggplant, and it's an interesting yarn mix. It has a little bit of acrylic there, but it also has wool, maybe something else. I forget exactly. Um, it comes in 50 gram balls and, or 50 gram skeins, and I used 14 of them. It is a bit yarn hungry, the stitch pattern, but um, yeah, it's worth it in the end. Um, it was, it was really fun. My niece and I went yarn shopping together and she picked out the yarn and she was looking for like a nice smooth yarn. And I think this was a good choice for it. Um, and hopefully with a bit of like acrylic and other stuff in there, it'll be easier to care for. Um, I also gave her a deep pillar thing. So hopefully that'll also be helpful. Um, yeah, the only modification I made was I added an extra repeat in the yoke when I tried it on 
it felt too high and I'm like really gun shy now about things being too high in the armpits and so it's like I'm gonna add an extra like v-stitch repeat um just to be safe um but turns out after adding the weight of the arms and the body it pulled the yoke down and that was totally unnecessary so if I were to make this again I would just do it exactly the pattern and not add length um thankfully though it's not too deep I don't think and I think it's fine so <laughs> at least fingers crossed it's fine I heard from my niece recently and she said she's already worn it like four times since Christmas so that's been that was it was very sweet of her to say so <laughs> All right, so that is everything I knit in 2023. However, I also want to show you my first finished object of 2024, and that is the Snowheim Cardigan by Sanna Skarn. I am so proud <laughs> of making this. I'm so proud of this project. Um, yeah. So let's try it on. So I made this as a present for my mother-in-law and her birthday is this month. And so she and my father-in-law are coming down tomorrow, I think. So I'm going to give it to her then. And yeah, it's just like both Nathan's parents and my parents have just been so supportive of well, just like us as a family, but also of like my knitting hobby. <laughs> and so like I'm slowly trying to work through and try and show some appreciation. So this is the size XXL. And unfortunately, that's the biggest size they have. And it's like a 48 inch bust finished garment size. Like that's their the biggest they have, which is not size inclusive. However, when I saw the pattern and it's in this book, uh, the DNT, let's see. Like it's just called Santa Scar and DNT booklet. Um, I just loved it. It's such a nice pattern. And um, let's see, there's a lot of stuff in here that I do like to make, I do want to make, but this one was definitely my favorite. Um, I actually want to knit this knit this exact pattern again for myself. Um, probably like the original colors. I like the green. Um, but what got me down this rabbit hole in the first place was at one point, I think this last March or something of 2023, uh, my mother-in-law was telling some story about when she and her sister were much younger like they had this whole knitting phase and her sister made her a brown cardigan and she wore it to pieces. Like it was a Icelandic color work cardigan type thing and she just loved it and until it like fell apart. <laughs> and so she doesn't have it anymore. Um, but I was like, you know what? I knit, I can make you a brown color work cardigan. <laughs> and so I like had that in my mind as kind of like a, ode to her sister relationship but also like she's given me a lot of yarn and so it's been I just kind of want to say thank you um anyway it's I'm really happy with it um I think this will be like just the right amount of positive ease for her however I do think the sleeves are too long my again my uh row gauge was off but, um, so I have a feeling, like, even once she tries it on, it'll probably be, and there's a chance it'll still be at her, her knuckles, which will be too much, probably. But I plan on doing some surgery in case that's the case. Um, what I'm going to do is, like, what I described for the cumulus tea. I'll thread something through here and set, thread something through, like, the corresponding part of the pattern and then cut out the middle, <laughs> except opposite of the cumulus, I guess. I'll cut out the middle and then kitchener around to seam it back together. And then I'll just use duplicate stitch as needed to fix the color work part. So that's my plan if the sleeves are too long. 
Um, there are like increases as you go up the sleeve. So the stitch counts will be different, but I don't think it'll be big enough to matter. And you probably won't notice. That'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so the big thing is that this is my first Norwegian pattern, I think. So like it's written in English, they translated it. Um, but it's not written in the American style of writing patterns. And so it's like, okay, oh, they didn't specify actually how to do that. Hmm, what do you mean by that? And so it's like trying to figure that out. And it's my first maybe all over color work garment. The Fosbane was my first color work garment, but it's not color work all over. My son Ethan decided to join us. So if you hear any noises, it's fine. Um, let's see. So yeah, this is knit bottom up in the round, and then you cut it open with a steak. I've never done that before, and it was very exciting. You also steak the arms, and so you're you're knitting all of this in the round as well, and then you just bind off along along your two. Go away. Um, and then you like, I used mattress stitch to stitch the top of the, um, shoulders together. And then, let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, let's show you the inside. I love how the inside looks of a colorwork yoke. That's so cool. And then I found that cute little tag actually when I was shopping with my mother-in-law. And so um, she helped me pick it out and she didn't know what it was for. Um, but yeah, here's the uh, inside of the steak for the sleeve. I was actually supposed to use the brown instead of the green for the facing, but it's okay. Oops. Um, you're not actually going to see it. Um, yeah. And then it was kind of a little nerve wracking to figure out like how far down in the body to cut for the arms. And as you'll see, that is definitely not the cleanest, but oh well, that's okay. You're not looking there anyway. Um, and then here's the inside of the button band. I think it is so clever how you knit the facing, this like fabric, brown fabric here, at the same time you do the button band. And it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Of course you would do that. <laughs> so that was really nice. Um, yeah, I just, I'll pull my chair back <laughs> so I can sit down. Um, but one of the things I thought was so funny and pretty cool about this pattern was that I never got tired of it. Um, it was so much fun to knit, and by the time I finished the body and both sleeves, I was like, I'm ready to make another one. I want to make one for me. <laughs> it was just so much fun, and I'm, I'm really happy I didn't get tired of it. It was a joy to knit start to finish. Um, though I will say this took me, I started December 1st, and I finished January 23rd. Like, and by finish, I mean... It's been blocked, the buttons are in, and all of the ends are in, like, actually totally finished. Um, and the blocking took a couple days to dry, so that's in there too. Um, yeah. The uh, finishing part of it, so like there's the knitting part, and then there's the finishing part. So like, seaming everything together, stitching, sticking, button bands, like, adding buttons. All those things like that part took like a solid two weeks. It felt like forever. I was not so happy about, I, I didn't enjoy that part as much, but um, yeah, it was, it was, the rest of it was still really fun and it's definitely worth all the effort. Um, but yeah, I love it. I'm so happy with it. I'm really excited to give it to her. Um, I, 
hadn't, I've never made a garment like this before. I've never steeked until now. I've just never done this, but, um, it worked out and I was so fiddly and careful with how I <laughs> cut and placed and sewed everything. Um, like I really tried to make sure, what is it? Like these T's line up at the seam in the middle over the shoulder and like probably in my next podcast I'll show some process clips of making this and I had stitch markers everywhere all over the pattern and so like where even am I I don't know there we go um for cutting the steaks and for cutting the um arms like the stitches are symmetrical and I was fastidious about making sure everything matched <laughs> um, which was fun and definitely worth the time and it made actually seeming it really easy because all the thinking had been done previously so I just had to like stitch very relaxedly because I already knew where I was going because the stitch markers were there so that made it nice and easy and yeah so it was fun and I'll probably talk more about the details of this in my next podcast podcast but I wanted to like actually show you a piece because it's going away soon um yeah really happy with it would definitely recommend and i plan on making another one <laughs> um, the buttons i used are these um 15 millimeter coconut buttons and i just think they match the yarn so well the yarn i used was cascade 220 sport it comes in 50 gram skeins and I used six skeins of the brown, five of the white, two of the green, and one each of the orange and yellow. Um, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to do another one. It'll be so nice and comfy to wear. I am really happy with the yarn. I love it. It's a good price point and it has a ton of colors. It's really really good color work yarn I'm really curious to see how it wears so we will see but yeah and it's and it's soft very comfy um and it's a really nice thickness it'll be like warm without being too warm yeah. so that's everything I made in 2023 plus an extra <laughs> so Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you found some patterns that maybe you found inspiring. And yeah, I hope you have a great start to the new year and I'll see you as time goes on. Happy knitting. Close the curtain, some herbal tea. Hey